So with that, I would like to go ahead and introduce today's speaker, Adam Benefield. Adam attended the University of North Alabama as an undergraduate and graduate student, obtaining a bachelor's degree in geographic information science, or GIS, with a focus on environmental geography and nature society interactions. He went on to complete a master's in geospatial science with a research focus on wildfires in the Rocky Mountain region. His professional experience has included state level natural resources management and a switch into broadband. This included an internship with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Wildlife Damage Management Program, and now broadband consulting with a focus on network design and accessibility research. After moving around the Great Lakes region in Idaho, Adam now is back in Alabama. His personal time outside of work and research is spent on long distance running, live music, and generally spending as much time outdoors as possible, which I definitely understand. <laughs> so we're glad to have Adam with us today. And with that, I'll turn it over to him. Okay. And if you need any help sharing, just let me know. Okay, I think. Looks good. Everything looks good. Good deal. Let me do some adjusting here on my screen. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. I'd like to thank the Southwest Fire Science Consortium for allowing me to present my research today. My name is Adam Benefield, and my co author's name is Dr. Jian Chen. And this was a part of the research that I completed as a graduate student at the University of North Alabama. So, to go into a little bit of background on where my interest in this region first began, in 2017, as an undergraduate student, I participated in a field course that was hosted by the University of North Alabama Department of Geography to the uh, Rocky Mountain region. This trip began in the state of Colorado and went as far north as South Dakota to the Black Hills region. And on this trip, we studied the geomorphology of the Rocky Mountains, as well as cultural issues of the Rocky Mountains, things such as you know, wildfire and human interaction with wildfire. And this planted the seed for future wildfire research, whether I really realized it at the time or not. Later on, before starting my graduate education, I went on a road trip with some friends where we hiked in camp. And one of the places that we stopped was in San Juan National Forest. And I quickly became very interested in this part of the country. And this all eventually led to researching wildfire in San Juan National Forest. So as we know, wildfire is very prevalent in the American West, especially in the Rocky Mountain region. And wildfire is very complex in this region. Natural biophysical conditions of the Rockies, as well as historical wildfire management has created a landscape in the 21st and 20th century that is extremely prone to wildfire. And at the same time, people are very drawn to this part of the, the world for outdoor recreation. And our research essentially looks deeper into how exactly how outdoor recreation influences wildfire patterns in this part of the world that is extremely prone to wildfire. So throughout the entire country and especially in the Rocky Mountain regions, there is a continual expansion of an area known as the wildland urban interface. And this is essentially where development meets forested lands. This provides people greater access to forested lands for outdoor recreation and increases the number of people living in and around these fire prone landscapes. While this is happening, a United States Department of Agriculture survey showed that around 97% of people in the U.S. will participate in outdoor recreation each year, often happening on America's public land units like national parks, national forests, you know, state, all type of land units. And naturally, with this kind of phenomenon happening, there are concerns about how lack of outdoor recreation etiquette could be influential to wildfire. And outdoor recreation etiquette is things such as leave no trace policy, you know, properly managing your campfire and things of that nature. And while this is happening, the specific influence of outdoor recreation variables have not been examined on in the existing body of literature on the spatial pattern and human influence of wildfire up until this point. And this has got at our problem statement, which is, does accessibility in the form of outdoor recreation influence the size and pattern of anthropogenic wildfires? 
And throughout this presentation, I'll interchangeably use anthropogenic and human cost, just both mean that the source of the wildfire ignition was human. And in our research, we focused on previously established human accessibility variables and geographic variables, and then we expanded upon this to look at specific outdoor recreation variables like hiking trails, vehicle trails, and campsites. You know, our goals in this research was to, you know, provide key information to forest managers as well as spread awareness to the general public. You know, hopefully as wildfire season is starting, you know, this would provide the general public more knowledge when, you know, more awareness of wildfire and how that they could prevent wildfires. So in previous research on the spatial pattern and human influence of wildfire, researchers typically look at two different scales of analysis. The first being a large scale, which where researchers look at an entire state, a multi-state region, or an entire country. Some areas where this research has been performed is the state of California, various states throughout the southeastern United States and Midwest, and the country of Austria. And the second type of analysis researchers perform is what we've been calling a local region analysis. And this is where researchers will look at an individual land unit specifically. Some areas where this research has been done is the Pacific Northwest of the United States and the Boreal Forest of Canada. And the main thing that is different between these two scales of analysis is that large scale analysis focuses, focuses more on population variables, things like income, you know, housing tops, and things of that nature to really understand that type of relationship where they'll look at specific accessibility variables like roadways. But we, you know, we believe in it for our analysis, this was a little bit too generalized because there's so many different management practices that can take place over an entire state. You know, you really don't have specific knowledge of any one area. Whereas a local region analysis, looking at the individual land unit, they could be a public land unit, a private land unit, or a mix of the two, looks at the variables surrounding the land unit, such as population variables in the existing counties of the land unit, before moving in to look at specific accessibility variables that are really just unique to the focus of their study. And in the analysis at both scales, researchers implement a variety of different regression analysis and descriptive statistics. And in this existing literature, there's been no research reported for the Southern Rocky Mountains specifically and no existing research that fully examines outdoor recreation variables. And you know, that was our goal was to fill that kind of knowledge gap. So our study area, San Juan National Forest located in the Southern Rocky Mountains in Southwestern Colorado is approximately 1.8 million acres total. And 41% of San Juan National Forest is wilderness area. And this really mixes well with our results because only certain outdoor recreation activities are allowed in wilderness areas. So when I go over the results later, we feel like this really will help forest managers to locate specific locations where you know, more human caused wildfires are starting. Another thing that's interesting about San Juan National Forest is that it shares specific fire characteristics with more northern and southern portions of the Rocky Mountains. And you know, there's several national forest land units directly surrounding San Juan National Forest. So we believe that these results have implications not only in the land unit that we studied, but across a larger area as well. And when we were looking at our data initially, 22% of all the wildfires that occurred in the time of our study between 2000 and 2018 were human caused. And we feel like this warranted specifically looking at human caused wildfires in this analysis. Different bodies of research have examined wildfires as a whole and separated, but we felt like with this, with this large of percent relatively, we wanted to look specifically at human caused wildfires. So another thing that I really like about the analysis that we, that we did is that in theory, it can be recreated on any public land unit. All of the data that we used is publicly available. So all of the human accessibility and outdoor recreation variables, 
the wild land urban interface data, and all the geographic variables we gathered directly from online sources. The only data that we didn't directly gather from online sources was the wildfire data. So when I started this research as a graduate student in early 2019, the most up-to-date data wasn't published yet, but the San Juan National Forest GIS department had that available and they were very good about providing us access to that and being very responsive. So now I want, I'd like to talk a little bit about the different research methods that we implemented in our analysis. The first is a case control logistic regression analysis. And this was used specifically to study human caused wildfire occurrence. And situations where a case control logistic regression analysis is implemented is times where the dependent variable is binomial in nature, meaning it's a yes or no type variable. So like wildfire, it happened at a, in any given location or it didn't happen. And how this works is essentially the independent variable, which in our case is human accessibility, outdoor recreation and geographic variables is tested against the wildfire control points. And then it's tested against an equal number of random points throughout the map. So, you know, 357 random points were generated using GIS. And this type of analysis is really beneficial to wildfire occurrence because it prevents false significant tests that would occur if an independent variable would be significant across the entire study area. So the second type of an analysis that we implemented is what's called a just standard multivariate regression analysis. And this was used for anthropogenic wildfire size, which is a continuous data type, meaning that each wildfire has an associated size with it. And something that was interesting about this data set was that it was very skewed, this, the wildfire sizes were. So there were many small wildfires in San Juan National Forest that were started by humans and a few large ones. And some other bodies of research have grouped wildfires into small and large categories. And we feel like this wouldn't, you know, 100% represent the data in the best way. So we did not group into small and large categories here. And, you know, we also believe that by not only examining wildfire occurrence and variables that were significant to that and looking at size, you know, it really helps to give a complete, you know, it helps to complete our results basically. So that is why we wanted to study wildfire size as well. So as I mentioned before, we implemented you know, previously established variables that were human access accessibility and geographic. But right now I wanna focus on specifically the new variables that we added to the data set and talk about our, you know, our wildfire data and why we chose the years 2000 to 2018. So our dependent variables were wildfire occurrence, human caused wildfire occurrence and SAS from 2000 to 2018. And we chose this because it really, it represents modern wildfire. In the research, you know, our focus specifically was on modern wildfire in San Juan National Forest. So we chose those years. And it seemed like the data when you move into the 1990s is a little bit less complete. So it was really the perfect cutoff. The new independent variables that we implemented were hiking trail density, distance from hiking trail, vehicle trail density, distance from vehicle trail, distance from trailhead, campsite density, and distance from campsite. And by looking at the, the density of these variables and the distance from these variables, you can not only identify you know, specific locations in the forest, but it also kind of gives you an understanding, some insight into specific usage patterns. So, you know, areas of lower density hiking trails are potentially like single trails that go deeper into the forest for like overnight backpacking and, you know, specific activities like that. So now I'd like to discuss the results of my, our analysis. The results for a case control logistic regression analysis on wildfire occurrence. The variables that were significant to human caused wildfire occurrence were hiking trail density, distance from hiking trail, which both showed a negative statistical relationship. And this means that 
as hiking trail density decreased and as distance from hiking trail decreased, more human caused wildfires did occur. Vehicle trail and distance from vehicle trail had the exact opposite relationship, which was a positive statistical relationship where as the vehicle de trail density increased and as a distance from vehicle trail increased, more human caused wildfires were likely to occur. Campsite density, which showed a positive relationship. Road density and distance from road that showed the same relationship as hiking trails, both negative, and elevation and slope that both showed a negative relationship. So interestingly enough, the only two variables that were outdoor recreation that were not significant to human caused wildfire in our analysis were distance from trailhead and distance from campsite. And I think it would be good to clarify exactly what we were looking at with distance from trailhead. And that was just looking to see if there was any patterns with human caused wildfires with people moving further away, like deeper into the trail or closer to the trailhead. And that variable was not significant. So as I mentioned before, we believe that looking at these variables really gives you insight into like specific usage practices. So hiking trail density and distance from hiking trail both showed a negative statistical relationship. And you can think of this as like trails that go deeper into the forest that are more like single track top trail, you know, go into some of the larger, more attractive areas in San Juan National Forest, like the 14ers and areas closer to the hiking trail. So, you know, overnight backpacking where people are starting wildfires unintentionally. And vehicle trail density and de distance from vehicle trail had a positive relationship, which was the exact opposite of hiking trail. I'm not as familiar with the world of off-road vehicles that vehicle trails are used for, but you can really, you can think of these higher density vehicle trail locations as more like looping trail networks that are most likely closer to the boundaries of the forest and easier to access. One of the, um, the variables that I really was interested in was distance from vehicle trail. So it, it seems that people who are participating in outdoor recreation around these vehicle trails are moving off road further and starting wildfire. So this could be, you know, they're going off trail with their vehicles or they're potentially going off trail and camping and starting wildfires. And we see that campsite density, as it increases, there are more campsites. And distance from campsite was not, there was no relationship to that, but I still think that that shows some type of results. You know, it means that people aren't moving away from campsites and starting wildfires, which, you know, that's still knowledge. So road density and distance from road, you know, it was very similar to hiking trails where I feel like it's most likely related to camping where people are going to more you know, deeper remote portions of the forest and starting wildfires close to the roads and slope and elevation areas where there were lower elevation relative to San Juan National Forest and decreased slope is where more human caused wildfires are starting. And, you know, this most likely has to do with accessibility. Those portions of the forest are typically easier for humans to use and gain access to. So now for our discussion of the multivariate regression analysis on human caused wildfire size. In our analysis, we found that there were actually no outdoor recreation variables that were significant to wildfire size. However, we found that distance from slope and, or distance from road and slope both showed a positive relationship. So distance from road and slope, it's, it's very interesting because if you remember the variables that were significant to wildfire occurrence were both it, slope and distance from road had a negative relationship. However, size had the opposite. So a wildfire is more likely to occur close to a road and be very small in nature. But however, when it does occur further away from the road itself, it's very large. And slope has the same relationship where a human caused wildfire is very much likely to occur in an area of lower slope. However, when it does occur in the area of high slope, it's going to be larger in nature. And that is consistent with previous analysis on wildfire and slope 
by other researchers as well throughout different parts of the country. So in conclusion, we found that outdoor recreation is not very influential on wildfire size. However, it's very influential on wildfire occurrence. You know, we believe that these results show specific usage practices that can result in wildfire. You know, things such as overnight backpacking, uh, locations where there's a higher density of vehicle trails, designated campsites, and more remote roadways. And you know, this is, I feel like, very important in a land unit like San Juan National Forest. Because compared to a national parks land unit, you know, outdoor recreate, re sorry, outdoor recreators and visitors have more of a free range type usage. Uh, it's not necessarily designated to specific locations. So having, you know, this kind of insight on specific activities that outdoor recreators are participating in that influence human caused wildfire is very important. And our results also show that a higher density of some of these locations may actually be helpful in preventing wildfire, things such as higher density of hiking trails and roadways. And, you know, this could be contributed to many things. It could be contributed to usage patterns. It could be, you know, management of vegetation in these areas. It's, it's very complex. And I think that forest managers themselves would really be able to interpret that as well. And we find that, you know, no matter what, the primary risk of human caused wildfires is lack of outdoor etiquette in all forms of usage. Um, throughout my time participating, participating in outdoor recreation, you know, I've heard a lot of, there, I've heard a lot of people talking and seen instances where people point the finger at like the other group, you know, I'm a, I participate in this activity, people who participate participate in this activity are doing worse than me. And, you know, I've seen that a lot. Well, these results show when it comes to wildfire, that's not really the case. It seems to be that everyone that's participating in all sorts of different activities is starting wildfires. And our results also show that there's a lot more that can be researched in the future. We believe that this is a very strong baseline for reacher future research in a specific phenomenon. So any variable that we found that was significant could be further researched and further explained. You know, that specific phenomenon could be examined on a very micro level. So now I'd like to open the uh, presentation up to questions and discussion. Great, thank you so much for that presentation, Andrew. All right, Adam, I'm so sorry. Oh. Um, no problem. Thank you. No, that was great to hear about. And honestly, I would love to dig more into um, into your publication and the raw data as well. Um, so, sort of building off of your last point, I was curious. Um, you know, given that the pandemic catapulted more folks than ever, um, especially those who may not have experience with fire safety and outdoor ethics, um, to get outdoors and get onto public lands. How do you see this research being built upon and used in the future? I think this, so after, shortly after we published this, a, an article was uh, printed in the Colorado Sun that actually was the person who wrote the article was researching this specific phenomenon. And they were able to use the results of our analysis later on, you know, in their writing process to really, you know, expand upon this and discuss this. So. That's how I feel like this can be used in the future is essentially to reinforce, even reinforce knowledge that we already have, you know, and it's kind of a clear ground to stand on when it comes to outdoor recreation, etiquette awareness and things of that nature. Great, and I agree with that assertion that this is a great foothold, um, a good starting point. Um, and then towards the end of your presentation, in your conclusions, um, you put forward the suggestion that higher density of hiking trails and roadways may prevent wildfires. I may have misinterpreted that, but can you just elaborate on that? Uh -huh, definitely. So essentially I was saying that where, like in the case of hiking trails, negative, uh, as there were a lower density of hiking trails and a shorter distance from hiking trails, there were more wildfires. So you know, the opposite of that 
is seems to be preventative of wildfires where there's higher in higher density locations human caused wildfires are not as likely to happen and i when i was doing the literature review on this that was one of the big things that other researchers had talked about was like monitoring of those situations or of those areas and how that could contribute to less wildfires um, you know it could be a variety of different things though I know the the vegetation in a lot of these areas is more seems to be more wildfire prone based on some of the other existing literature, so you know that could possibly be it as well. Great, and that's a good explanation. I know a lot of it is speculation, so I appreciate you <laughs> coming into it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, tr I try not to dig too much if it's something that I'm not a hundred percent knowledgeable about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's always that um, balancing your your best mm -hmm. guess is what you know for sure. Um, and I I hope you don't mind. I went ahead and shared the link to your research so that folks can dig into that further if they would like to. Oh, that's um, fine. Thank you. And then can I also go ahead and share your contact information if folks have any follow up questions? Um, mm -hmm. if they see this recording or awesome. Definitely. And if um, I can send you the link that mm -hmm. I was shared that allows anyone to access the article if no one, or if someone wants to look at it and doesn't have uh, you know, access to that specific journal or anything. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and I'll go ahead and share that out afterward. Okay. So if anyone has any additional questions for Adam, please go ahead and post them in the chat now. Or we're a fairly small group today, so if you want to unmute yourself and uh, pose a question for Adam, you can do that as well. Yeah, and I would definitely be interested in hearing anybody's thoughts, you know, just about anything, whether it's future research or even critique of the research and where mm -hmm. it can be improved. Yeah, um, I will say the Forest Stewards Guild is going to be doing some, um, some social science research this summer, uh, going out and talking to and interviewing, mm -hmm. um, you know, forest users, people who are out on public land talking to them about all of these things that you guys dug into in your research. Um, I think that would be really beneficial in helping to explain, further explain a lot of these variables. I know, so the undergrad department that I was in was, it was very balanced between GIS and like the social geography. And when, when I was initially like digging into this type of research, I wanted, I was, it was either take the social geography approach or more of the GIS specific. So, I would definitely love to hear more about these specific phenomenon that's going on with these variables, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and coming from the perspective of New Mexico fires that are burning right now, I think it's something mm -hmm. that a lot of people are, are going to be interested in in the future. So I'm glad that we have, you know, your, your research as a baseline to build off of. So. All righty. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. Um, so we'll give it just another minute, but oh, Margo, I saw you on mute. Would you like to pose a question? Yeah, um, let me see the video, okay. <laughs> um, sorry, I, it might take a minute to get to my question because I just recently discovered you know, this webinar and I'm writing a paper um, for my master's program on um, recreation and how much that's influencing human-caused fires. And so I wasn't able to find very much research either. Um, like I, I found one paper um, that wasn't, it wasn't talking about recreation, but just human caused fires. Mm -hmm. And so did you find any work that spoke specifically to human caused fires that are caused by recreation? There was, there was one research, it was the one in Austria and they, they looked at like, I think they looked at hiking trails, but it was the case where it was, uh, you know, a large scale type of analysis over, you know, the entire country. Uh, I can, if you, you know, you'll have my contact information. I can send you a link to that article, article and then some of the other research on human accessibility. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, I was wondering also if you, used any like vegetation mapping to see what fuel load was each year. Um, so like I have some experience with using rangelands.app uh, mm -hmm. 
it's a new thing that came out. Um, so yeah, have you? Yeah, we, we actually did implement uh, land cover in this analysis. I just didn't want to really focus on it too much for this webinar, but we just used you know, your basic vegetative land cover and extracted the values at each wildfire point and uh, had that as a part of the descriptive statistics. Okay. But that would be another direction that this could definitely be taken. Yeah, yeah, especially when we're, you're looking at rangelands and not forest lands, because it varies so much. Mm -hmm. range yeah. um, I guess last question, it kind of slipped me real quick. Um, <laughs> let's see. Sorry, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, but. yeah, it's the the big thing with this research. So I, for my master's thesis, I I think I took on a little bit too much because I tried to examine. I looked at lightning wildfire too specifically, and you know that was I tried to examine like all of these variables and everything. And what I was left with was like all of these results, and it's like okay, how do we make sense of one part of this? <laughs> Yeah. So I guess if I had any advice, it would be to, you know, be aware of what can happen like that. Gotcha. Um, let's see. I did find another paper, um, and it was recent, like 2020. Uh, I, um, it was talking about how 80, like their statistic was 84% of wildfires are human caused, but um, most of that was back east. Whereas oh, like, yeah. if you looked in the West, that was more than 50%. But I know working in Northern Nevada for the BLM, um, like those numbers in Northern Nevada, it was probably about 70 to 90%. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a lot of the existing research in specifically like in the Southeast, like you said, they would they wouldn't differentiate between lightning and human calls because that was the situation where it's like most wildfires are started by humans. You know, I think that's why they wanted, a lot of these researchers wanted to look at like the population variables and stuff like that to kind of understand that type of relationship. I know mm -hmm. it was like Mississippi, Missouri, and Kentucky, I think were the big, some of the states where they looked into that. Okay, thanks so much for answering my questions. Oh yeah, thank you for your questions. All right, well, I just wanted to say thank you one more time, Adam, for you know for coming on today, giving this presentation, joining us, presenting your research. Um, you know, I look forward to seeing where it goes from here um, and hope to work with you again in the future. Uh, thank you for having me, I'm honored and I'll definitely be attending these webinars in the future. So I like I like what y'all have going on here. It's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope that you reach out to the the knowledge exchanges in your area as well. And you know, if you see any good research, pass it on our way. So for sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye everyone. Bye bye.